Hello everyone. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm really excited that you did because I have a couple of announcements and of course some readings. So first of all I wanted to tell you a bit about last weekend. The Tree of Life had a Mother's Day um, get-together of sorts. It was absolutely fantastic. Charmaine and everybody there did such a great job. But just to let you know that I had also given or donated I should say a gift of a reading and I had Mandy Herbert that won so Mandy congratulations on winning the draw I'm anxious and excited to meet you and so I have received your message I'm, I'm really really pumped to give you a reading now I also wanted to say that I attended on Saturday as well the quad run for the acquired brain injury uh, association, some kind of, um, you know, get together in memory of Stéphane Blais. It was absolutely fantastic. There was a huge turnout. Everybody was full of mud, but everybody had smiles. The food was great. The prizes were amazing. And the turnout, like I said, it was fantastic. Thanks so much, Francine, Roger, everybody there, Joanne, Dan, everyone. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Absolutely, Stefan was there without a doubt. His spirit just loves through and through all of you. He's beautiful. Thank you for sharing your heart with me and thank you so much for all that you've done for me as well. You know, I just love all of you so much. I wanted to get to some readings now. I'm so excited and I don't have much time to be able to do them here on this video. So I want to make sure that I covered everything that I possibly could. Now the first person that wrote to me was Pauline. Now Pauline had a very interesting, beautiful email that talked about some family situations around her mother now going into a family, or I should say a nursing home, and the family has had some difficulties with that transition. Now I need to let you know, Pauline, that there's a man, a father figure or grandfather figure that comes around you very, very strongly. Now this person gives me the very strong sense that there's been some losses around you in terms of emotional turmoil. Now sometimes it's difficult when we put a parent into a long-term care facility or a nursing home because we feel that we're responsible for that, but we also feel that we're helpless in the situation. We know that they're getting older. We know that they're coming to closer, I should say, to the end of their lives, depending on the situation, but especially where, you know, health concerns are also involved. Now, I do feel that your mother has some health concerns, but not as serious as one would think. So I get the sense that there are some changes around her, difficulties in accepting going into a nursing home, whether with your siblings or your mother, but I need to tell you that the turnout of this situation is not going to be as difficult as you think it's going to be. Now you have to allow everybody to kind of grieve their emotional loss around the situation because you know everybody's feeling bad about putting your mother into this nursing home or kind of just leaving her there and let's say as you put it ignoring her. I don't think anybody's ignoring her. I just get the sense that around this situation it's just difficult for people to be able to express themselves or to be able to say okay mom's there but if I don't go and I don't have to see it, then, you know, I don't have to feel guilty about that. And so sometimes that happens. So instead of just, you know, going to a sibling and saying, look, you're not going to see mom, you, 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 you're not doing this, you, 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 you're not doing that. Instead of doing something like that, you might want to, you know, approach your siblings and saying, I don't know about you guys, but boy, am I ever feeling weird about this whole thing. You know, I'm feeling like I'm not maybe going enough or doing enough and I'm feeling guilty about this. Are you guys kind of feeling the same way? And see what happens with that situation because if you consider other people's feelings here as your own, everybody grieves differently and everybody's different level of understanding situations and grief is so different. So if you try to meet across the board like that and, and just try to maybe be a little bit more open-minded when it comes to that or just maybe give everybody their space and not judge the situation too quickly, you're going to see that perhaps the ignoring of your mother or not visiting as much is perhaps an internal grief and a fear of letting that situation go for what it really is. I think it's a grief of someone that hasn't passed yet and the fact that they're fearing you know, the worst situation to come. This sometimes makes families stronger, sometimes this makes families weaker, but Pauline, 
I do feel good about the outcome. So you have to be positive. Think of the things that you want, not what you don't want. And start maybe just letting your family know the stress that you're under as well. And just, you know, asking if they, if they feel the same as you do. Now, thank you very much, Pauline, for opening up your heart. This mail that comes around you loves you very, very much and is always with you. So I would encourage you to continue talking and asking favors. You're certainly very, very loved. Now, the next person I have here, and I felt a very, very strong presence around, is Kate. Now, Kate, I do have a mail that comes around you that gives me the sense that you're sort of interpreting a situation a little bit differently than he did. Now, I get the sense with your brother, although your brother passed away and you never really got to know him in your lifetime, and that you only met him months before he passed, I get the sense that you have um, a dark cloud over your head or that you've sort of put that dark cloud over your head just thinking that maybe somehow um, you deserve that or that you're destined just for terrible things to happen in your life. But I have to tell you, Kate, that I get the sense that this brother of yours might have passed months before had this not happened. Now, let me explain. Things happen for a reason in this lifetime. And I have to tell you that everything happens for a reason, and we know it. We don't know what the reasons are. But you have to believe that those reasons aren't good reasons. My mother told me all, all the time, oh my God, Jane, that happened for a good reason. And I used to ask her, what the heck are the reasons? Oh, I don't freaking know. But I gotta tell you, those reasons are really, really good. Now, the reason you got to meet your brother is because someone answered your prayer on the other side. You have an older female that comes through that gives me the sense that this male that comes through with her loves you very, very much. And the reason that you got to meet him is because your answer, your prayers were answered and they gave you exactly what you wanted and that was to meet your brother. Now I get the feeling that there was sort of like an intervention of some kind, spiritually speaking. And the reason you got to meet him is because they just felt that you needed to have some kind of belief system. But instead of meeting him and then him passing, you took this as a negative instead of just embracing it and saying, oh my God, I'm so lucky that I got to actually physically feel him and meet him and smell him and you know, just get to spend my time with him before he actually passed. I feel really good about a connection around you with an older female as well. I don't know if she passed with cancer, but I have to tell you, Kate, she comes around you quite often. I don't know if she's connected to your father's side, but I do get the sense of it. I need to tell you that your brother comes around, and I want you to continue talking to him. I want you to continue asking for favors of the other side, or to your spirit guides, and I want you to know that you're so loved, and that there are reasons you got to meet him before he passed, and I believe that to be an intervention. And so I want you to look at yourself as a very, very lucky person that got her dreams to come true somehow with just attracting what it was that you wanted so badly in your heart to happen. So I want to leave you with that, Kate, and I hope that you can understand your message here today. And I just want to send you a great big hug because you have good news coming also. So start smiling, start looking ahead to what it is that you really want. And don't look at this as a big cloud over your head. Instead, look at it as a godsend. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now, the next person here is Richard. And Richard's situation, a little bit different. And thank you, Richard, for giving me the permission to be able to discuss this very openly here on this video. As you well know, um, this is publicly aired. So, you know, I'm not mentioning last names here. But the sensitive situation here with Richard is that... Richard has a male uh, partner who has been very, very unfaithful openly. Now, Richard feels stuck in this situation because he loves his partner very, very much. However, his partner's infidelity has become unbearable and he doesn't feel special, as he puts it, um, in the eyes of this partner of his. And I need to tell you, Richard, when, when you asked about that, I had a very, very strong father figure come through. This is a man that died very suddenly. I don't know if in his sleep or just passed suddenly, but I get the sense there's a heart problem or a lung problem here with this. 
but I need to let you know that this man feels very, very sad about his expectations of you here on this earthly plane. He also gives me the sense that he was unfaithful to your mother and that your mother and father separated when you're only about 12 or 13 years old. He gives me the sense that your partner's infidelity reminds you of your father figure somehow. And I hate to tell you that, I'm so sorry to be able to connect the dots this way. But the thing is, you need to hear this. Now, Richard, this has nothing to do with you not being a good person or having to prove your love over and over and over again it has nothing to do with that. I need to tell you that your partner is really being selfish in that he's doing what he wants and he's just basically not respecting your, your needs or your wants. And so, you know, the definition of insanity here is always repeating the same actions and expecting him to change. It's simply not going to happen. Your father gives me the sense that you're going to have to do some really, really heavy-duty thinking here to be able to let the situation go because there's a bit of a codependency or a learned behavioral pattern in the same type of relationship that your father had with your mother and that you're having with this partner. And so your father gives me the sense that you deserve so much better and that he feels bad for the way he treated you and for the way he treated your mother when he was here living. He makes me feel that he passed away suddenly and that perhaps a little too early, so I don't know exactly um, you know, how old you were when he passed, but he just gives you the sense that he wasn't really there enough for you. So he wants to send you, you know, the great big big hug, Richard, and just to let you know that he loves you so much and that he feels bad, but that he's truly let that go on the other side and that he's of pure essence and pure love and that he doesn't judge himself anymore. So you need to let that go. And you need to know that you deserve to be loved also. Thank you so much, Richard, for opening up to me and for letting me discuss openly your situation. I know that there's going to be someone so much better for you in the next few years, but you need to take some time off for yourself. You need to heal over the situation when you're ready. You know, and when you're ready, you're going to know for yourself that you're going to be able to let this situation go for what it is. I wish you all the very best, Richard, and I'm sending you a lot of love. Now, the next person, Lisa. Lisa had to laugh at your note, but I felt so much when I read it. Lisa simply wrote, any messages for me, Jay? Question mark, question mark. So, Lisa, I need to tell you that your father has Parkinson's and that his Parkinson's is progressing. This man feels as if he's losing his livelihood or he's losing his essence of who he is around him. Now, I don't know if it's your mother that's passed or your grandmother because honestly, this person was much younger when they passed, so I can't tell the essence of it. But I'm going to tell you that it's connected to your father somehow, so either his wife, which is your mother, or his, his mom. So, which is your grandmother. Now, I don't feel a sister here at all. So it's someone of a, a little bit more than just a sister. Now, just to let you know that as your father's Parkinson progresses, they just give me the sense that there's you know some guilt around the situation, um, and perhaps not enough education on your part in terms of knowing what is anticipated with his disease. But they do make me feel um, that it's really not progressing as quickly as you're thinking it's going to. So you really need to know that although there is some progress, although there are some physical changes, I think that there's more depression here. You know, at the end of the day, I think it's the depression that's in such a state that it really needs to be addressed. And so with Parkinson's comes depression. You know, it's a natural form, um, you know, a natural symptom, I, I, should, I should say of that type of disease but they just make me feel that with the right support and help that there's going to be a little bit more brightness around the situation and so for your very little little question Lisa you have a great big answer so I just want you to know that you have to keep on smiling and be the strong girl that you are although your dad's you know Parkinson's is progressing you know and physically you're seeing some changes and you're seeing the depression within him just know that he's protected. Just know that it's really perhaps not as bad as you think and that there's a lot, 
the female spirit and strong presence that just wraps her arms right around you and sends you a lot of love. So I want to thank you so much for that, Lisa. Now, Cliff, also, Cliff sent me a nice little note. He just wanted to know if his job is going to settle. Yes, Cliff, it's going to settle. You have some good luck. You have a raise, and you have an extra contract coming in with that. That's the only message I had for you. So I'm going to leave you with that. Now, Debbie is the last person here on the blog today. And Debbie, this is a little bit of a sensitive situation as well, and I'm so glad that you wrote. Now, you didn't tell me who you wanted to contact, but let me tell you, I know exactly who wanted to contact you. Now, there's a Don or a Dennis or a Douglas or a David or a D name male that comes through in regards to taking his own life. Now, this person is very clear at being responsible for taking his own life. They don't tell me exactly how this happens, but the D male does tell me that he was responsible, that this was the third time that he had attempted suicide and the last time he finally got it right. Now, I hate to tell you that this way, but Debbie, I need to tell you that he's extremely happy on the other side. Now, he was grounded for a little bit because I do believe that agreements are broken when you commit suicide here on this earthly plane. We have five exits in life, and we have choices as to whether we're going to take these exits or not. Now, in his case, this Dan or Dennis or Dave or Douglas, in his case, he makes me feel that he made sure the last time that this attempt was going to take place. He makes me feel that he had to suffer in between worlds for a short time until someone came and got him to the other side. Now, with this D-man comes... I don't know if the name is a Cynthia or a Cindy or a Sydney or a Solin, but it's a s s sounding female. They make me feel that this female came through to get him and to help him transition to the other side when he was finally finished his grounding and his karmic lessons. Now, there's a lot of love that comes in through with this. I don't feel that the guilt is pointed towards you, so I don't feel that this had anything to do with you directly, but I do feel that his mother suffers as a result of finding him two days after he passed. And I do believe that there were some unanswered questions as to the way a note was written. And so it's not so much as to the note itself. It's not a suicide note. It's the blame that goes in that note. And so there's a great big, jeez, I really messed up here, and I should have never wrote that down. So you need to let his mother know that really this was not intended as a target. This was just simply pain coming out in ink on a piece of paper. Mom, please don't take this seriously. Don't take this so to heart. I know you lost your son. This is so difficult, but it was nothing that you did. So I want to leave you with that. Thank you, Debbie, so much for confiding in me. Thank you for the long note. I thank you so much for sharing all of this because there are so many unanswered questions when it comes to these types of passings. But just to let you know that there's always a place on the other side, even though someone commits suicide or is responsible for taking their life, certainly they do go through the light eventually. And they send you so much love when they do. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you so much for writing. <sighs> Boy, you sure keep me busy. I appreciate you. I'm booking the end of January. I'm also doing group sessions. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all of your responses. I'm looking for more reviews, by the way. If you want, just go to the website, mediumjlane.com. Go to the reviews and lend your comments there. I thank you so much for being part of my life. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.